once in a blue moon, the DK heavens will open up and bestow upon us a beautiful golden banana when we least expect it. And at a time where we have no clue when the next Donkey Kong game might even be announced, that's exactly what happened with the release of Kaze and the Wild Masks, a DKC-inspired retro platformer that you absolutely need to play. Let's talk about it. Kaze is not afraid to wear its influence on its sleeve. I mean, it's not even really subtle about it. You'll recognize all sorts of tropes and mechanics throughout, paying homage to its banana slam and source material. And I should be clear, that's not a bad thing. It's what got me interested in the game in the first place. Even the character you play as is basically Dixie Kong, complete with helicopter float and the ability to spin through enemies to gain extra speed. Which, let's be real, she's easily the best Kong anyway, they chose correctly. You don't have a partner per se, because your best friend got turned into a little pet thing when you accidentally released an evil sorceress from captivity, but they still act as your second hit by making a shield for you out of their love. Aww. But that bad bunny lady also turned all the vegetables into demon-possessed bad guys, so you gotta journey through the lands and turn them all back. See, you don't kill the monsters, you poof them back to normal. This game is super wholesome. Yet again, some of these guys may appear familiar. You got the spinies, claptraps, cannonball dudes. In a lot of ways, this really feels like a DKC4, and I had a stupid smile on my face the entire time. Also, this is totally an insignificant detail, but I plugged in my SNES USB controller just for fun, and the game automatically recognized it and synced up perfectly. You'd be surprised how little that actually happens with other titles. I love that they put in the work to give it the authentic 16-bit experience for those that really want it. Obviously, it's not all a rehash, though. The most original aspect of Kaze is the titular masks you find to alter the gameplay. The closest analog to these I could think of is the Animal Buddies, but I think that's selling the masks short. One lets you fly and shoot projectiles, one helps you swim faster and to lower depths, the Tiger Mask gives you a dash maneuver and allows you to climb walls, and the Lizard Mask turns the stage into a runner and gives you a double jump and bash attack for fast downward movement. This one is both the most frustrating and coolest, because it's really easy to mistime your jumps and fall to your death, but also leads to some crazy combo moves in some of the later stages. This feels unbelievably satisfying to pull off. But really, all of the masks switch up the levels enough to keep the whole journey fresh, and add to the plethora of other elements introduced in creative and rewarding ways. Pixel Hive puts their game design chops on full display here. But no Donkey Kong-esque adventure would be complete without exploration and tons of collectibles to find. I think what I was most excited about was the return of old school bonus barrels, this time in the form of crystal teleporters that take you to a hidden challenge. And yes, every single one is unique and handcrafted. This is what was missing, Tropical Freeze. I don't want to keep collecting the same bananas over and over. Not only are all of these enjoyable and cleverly designed, but they also added a quick retry button so you don't have to enter the warp again. Sometimes it's the little things that go the farthest, you know? Each stage has exactly two, and they form a complete gemstone if you beat both of them. And these gemstones are used to unlock extra levels if you find all of them in a particular world. Yeah, that's the good stuff right there. But of course, there's more. You have the four Kaze letters to collect, and 100 red gems in order to reach full completion. Every time you find all the letters, it reveals another part of the game's backstory, so you can understand a bit of the lore and how the world ended up this way. And if you gather all the red gems, you get a secret ending, ooh. I love that every collectible has a purpose. This is exactly the type of stuff I crave. Could you just inject it directly into my veins, please? Now, if you want even more bragging rights, you get a little medal for not taking any damage, and time trials unlock once you've completed a level. Yeah, I forgot to mention that Kaze also borrows a bit from the Rayman games. Who doesn't love a good speedrun to perfect your skills? They also put in the thing where you get more gems if you already have an extra heart, which gives you added reward if you're playing well. And even the bosses feel like something out of Rayman Origins or Legends. I will say, this is the one aspect I wish was a bit more engaging. They're mostly just avoidance fights until you can attack them and then go through another wave and so on. That said, there's certainly no pushovers. The bosses are easily the hardest parts of the game, and I gotta give props to the artists here. Their animation is so stinking good. Actually, all of the enemy design is top notch. Check out this carrot riding a sled, that's adorable. 
This guy gets mad every time you attack his little buddies and fills his cheek with air, and after two times he gets caught up by the wind and flown towards you so you can pop him like a bubble. They're like super cute and menacing at the same time. Don't worry though, if things are too tough for you, there's another mode with more forgiving checkpoints and extra health. In fact, that's really the places Kaze and the Wild Masks shine brightest, when it excels beyond the games it so clearly admires. There's no more pesky lives to weigh down the experience, every collectible is actually useful to find unlike some that I can think of, and they even use the bonus rooms to teach you advanced movement tech, like how you can stomp attack enemies to get an even higher bounce, or that if you float into the water you won't sink as deep. There's a lot more under the surface once you start to look for it. So while yes, there are some concepts that feel directly lifted, like the stop and go station level or the toxic tower level, my favorite ones were when they strayed from the formula and pushed Kaze to her limits. One of the unlockable stages has you falling down a bottomless pit, and you need to float and change your trajectory to avoid obstacles. I love this because that's something you could never do in DKC. Dixie can only float once in the air, while Kaze can do it infinitely. All of the hidden levels do really creative things, and while I wish there was one final brutally hard challenge when you 100% the game instead of just an alternate ending, that's really just a backhanded way of saying I simply wanted more of this game. There are four worlds in total, and it only took me about four hours to complete, but this is a quality over quantity thing. It introduces new ideas constantly and combines them together for a satisfying endgame. And the ability to gain lots of speed with your movement lends itself nicely to speedrunning, which is exactly what I've been doing ever since I beat the game. I could not believe such a faithful love letter dropped right before our last celebration of Donkey Kong, and I couldn't be happier. You totally need to play Kaze and the Wild Masks if you're a fan of retro platformers, but even if you don't have an affinity to DKC or its other inspirations, there's still a lot of charm and gratifying things to discover here. All I know is the developers have definitely entered my radar now, and I'm looking forward to whatever they decide to make next. Which leads me to our big announcement. On April 30th, Wizawa and I will be having a DKC2 race for charity on Twitch, and anyone that donates will be entered in a giveaway for a copy of Kaze and the Wild Masks. So if you want to support a good cause, enjoy some laughs with friends, and potentially win Kaze for yourself, come check out our Twitch channels around 4pm PST on April 30. I hope to see you there. There's still more DK Month videos yet to come, and prepare yourself, the last one's a tearjerker. I'll see you next time. Stay frosty, my friends.